Let's cover how to convert your Figma design to use auto layout in order to import it into Builder to turn it into live web pages with your code. So if you don't already know, Figma has an amazing feature called auto layout. It allows you to define how your UI elements should resize when the content inside or around them changes in size. So for an example, if I go in and edit this button text to be something new and longer, you'll see that the content is now overflowing around the button. Now that's not like a website works. A website, the button outer part would fit to match the text inside all the time. So with Figma, we can actually define similar constraints. So if you select the layer, this is sort of the frame wrapping our text that has the background styling. And I click this plus button next to auto layout. Now Figma has converted this to be responsive. So if I change text, notice how the button resizes. This is actually an amazing feature to use when creating designs and design systems. And if you're already using it out of the box, you can import your content into Builder without any additional setup in just one click. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you how to convert your entire design to use auto layout. Because just changing the button is enough to import just the button. But if I wanted to import this whole sort of section, I need to make sure that every layer in here is using auto layout or is a rasterized image. So let's continue. The key thing to know about auto layout is everything must be a row or a column. Meaning, if we take a look at our design, we can see a little bit of how this would work. So maybe I'll draw a rectangle to give you a sense of the stroke, everything. So here, we really sort of have two main columns, right? So we can envision this when using auto layout as basically two sort of vertical stacks that are side by side. I'll show you a little bit more of what I mean in a second. But in order to sort of match this behavior, we need to set up everything to be using these horizontal or vertical stacks, also sometimes known as rows or columns. So, for example, let's start converting this whole setup to be one sort of stack. So as you see here, if we go back to our button, anything using auto layout that's in a group has these little sort of two bars next to it. They'll either be vertical or horizontal. In order to import this design, we need every grouping here and every layer to have the same configuration has to be using auto layout. So let's start by taking this bottom section. Now one thing you might notice is some of these are SVG icons. They're very intricate and they don't really fit this mental model of rows or stacks. The contents sort of sit on top of each other. Anything that's like this, that is sort of a complex image, um, a complex vector, we can just rasterize that to an image to make it a single simple layer. This will make it a lot easier to import and work with. So if we go up to our hamburger menu and type rasterize, hit enter, great. Now we made that icon just one flat image. Let's do that with the rest of these. This vector is a little complex, so we'll rasterize it. And we'll do each of these individually. We don't necessarily want to do them all in one big image, because we might want some of these to reposition based on different screen sizes. Great. So now that I have all of these in a row as a set of images, let's then convert this into a group so that we can make this one row of elements using auto layout. So I'm using shift click to select them all. I'm using command G to make a group, though you can also select that from this menu here. And then I'm hitting the plus button. Great. So this converted to auto layout. And I'll show you a little bit more of what that means in this context. But you'll notice that things got kind of repositioned. That's because there's a different set of controls for positioning with auto layout. A lot of times you want things centered, so we can just click the center icon, and now everything fits nicely inside. Now this makes a nice little stack. So if I ever wanted to rearrange elements, I can actually just bump them around. These are not sort of freeform editable, they have a structure. This is looking pretty good. So now that I have my button with auto layout, and let's see, I've got this works with text. Let's maybe convert these to be a group, add auto layout, great. And now look at this group is not yet using auto layout. I should be able to just add it. Cool, I'm gonna tell that to center as well. And then what else do we have here? This last group already looks like I'm using auto layout. That's great. So to test this, I should be able to rearrange things and see them bump around. 
fantastic. We've converted this whole section to be all the way up. And worth noting, if this wasn't already an image, and maybe this was a set of vectors, I would have rasterized this too. Let me quickly jump over and make these same updates over here. So I've got a couple sort of shapes for this logo. Group it and rasterize selection. I've got some text, group auto layout, and I like this to be centered. Uh, worth noting there's other controls here like padding and margins that you can set. These are handy and you should take a look at Figma's auto layout docs on how to go really deep here. This button needs to be auto layout and then let's make the final sort of row here all auto layout. So let's grab it from this way. This frame, auto layout, place it here. And again, note that everything inside needs to be using auto layout and it will tell you if each layer is sort of a horizontal or vertical stack. Just so you know, you can also change that here. Horizontal, everything's going sideways or vertical. Now to get the very last piece, we're just gonna group these two. We're gonna make it auto layout. Figma's generally quite smart about which directions we should go. So it knows this is clearly horizontal. I can make some adjustments to the spacing. I think we have everything we need. If this is in fact the correct set of layers, I'm not seeing any more groups that are not using auto layout. So now when we open our HTML Figma plugin, which if you don't already have it open, you can just search it in here, HTML, and open it up. And then we can click Git code. This will validate that we're using um, the correct auto layout everywhere. If we're not, it'll highlight in red which groups are not using auto layout and need to. Great, now our browser has launched a new tab with our builder fiddle. This lets you play around with builder whether you have an account or not. It looks like it pulled in all of our content as expected and it stacks responsibly nicely. I would recommend making any sort of final layout adjustments. Like maybe I want this image to be a little bit wider to fit the contents nicer. Maybe I want to change the options to say the image should always be contained inside. That's a little cleaner. If you need to make any positioning changes, like maybe we want to pull this down a little bit, just using a keyboard shortcut for that. And then maybe at the smaller sizes, we see that we want to make some other changes. For example, maybe for this size, we want the text to be a little bit smaller. So this will add a little bit of responsive CSS. And maybe in this case, this box, we want this to actually stay as a row. Oops. I think maybe I want the box inside. Yeah, these columns, I actually don't think they need to stack vertically. So we're gonna show advanced and say, we never need to stack them. There we go. They look better sideways. And I'll add a little padding top there. There, I think our design's perfect. Now once we're ready, we can just get the code. And this will load up code for all sorts of different frameworks and setups. It's quite cool. Vue, Svelte, React, Angular, plain old HTML and CSS and use that in any of your projects. Or if you want to not have to worry about copying and pasting code back and forth anytime a design or piece of text needs to change, you can take this content and if you have a builder account, create one if you don't already, go to the insert menu and then over here click save as template. Now when we save this, I'll call this sort of onboarding um, options. This template will show up in our templates library and now any content that we have live on our website or otherwise, we can just drop this template in in Builder, add it to anything that you're using in Builder, make any edits you want. Maybe we're going to call this Visual CMS 2.0 and publish it. Thanks for watching.